In this video, I'll show you how to set up your Toshiba Canvio drive on your Mac computer. There's a few different options you can select and I'll go through all of them. After this, I'll even show you how to back up the content of your computer on this hard drive using Time Machine. So let's get started right away. The first step is obviously to plug the drive in your Mac computer using the USB cable that is included inside of the box. Then we need to open an app called Disk Utility that is included in your Mac. You don't need to download anything. Go on the top right corner over here where you see all the icons and you should see a magnifying glass. Click on it. Then you'll need to type Disk Utility like this. And the first option should be this app over here. Click on it. There's many different options on the left side. Here you're going to see all the hard drive and SSD drive that are connected to your Mac computer. On the top over here where it says internal, this is the drive that is inside of your computer, the one that came with your computer. We don't want to touch any of these. What we need to look at is over here where it says external. In my case, I have multiple drives connected but maybe in your case you only have one what's important here is to find the hard drive you just connected it could say sandisk samsung seagate or any of these you should find the name in this list over here and if you only have one drive connected well it will be easy it will be the only one over here what i want you to do is to click once on it to select it with your left click like this you should see all the information on the right side, including how big it is. This way you can make sure that this is the one that you just plugged in. Next step is to press on the erase button that is located on the top right corner. Click once on it and you should see this opening. The first step is to change the name, if you wish, you're not obligated, of this drive. So let's say test drive 5 in my case. Well, this is the name, the new name that this drive will have and every time you'll plug it in it will be a lot easier to recognize it since it's a name you give it and when you'll see it in the list you'll know that this is uh, the drive. So give a new name and then this is the most important part of this tutorial is the format. So as you see here, there's many different ones and depending what you intend to do with this drive, you have to select the right one. So which one should you select? Now right here we have one, two, three, four, five options, but you may see many more than this. So I'll list them all and go through all of them so you make a better decision. So the first thing that you may see in this list is APFS. Apple file system. This option is if you intend to use this hard drive only with Mac computers. So let's say you have an iMac and a MacBook Air and maybe your friend has another Mac and you just want to move files from these computers using this drive and you'll never, never use a PC computer with this drive, then you should choose this APFS if all these Mac computers are recent. What I mean by recent is that they're running Mac OS 10.13, which is High Sierra, or the latest versions. So if you're planning to use your drive with Mac computers that are from 2018 and more recent ones, you should choose the first option since this will be the most efficient one. Now the second option that you may see is Mac OS Extended. This is the same exact thing that I um, talked about just now, about APFS. The only difference is you should select this option if you intend to use with Mac computers that are older, that are running Mac OS Sierra or older versions. Again, if you're thinking using this drive with Windows computer and your Mac, you should not choose any of these two first options. Third option that you may see is MS-DOS, which is FAT, FAT32 for people who know. 
this option will be compatible with Mac computers and Windows. But the major problem over here is that it's only capable of holding files up to four gigabytes, which I think it's not useful for most people. The only reason I can see someone selecting this option is if you intend to use this drive with your Mac computer, but also with a smart TV. Mine, for example, is an LG Smart TV and it only accepts FAT32. And if I want to watch movies that I have transferred from my Mac to this drive on my Smart TV, I must select MS-DOS FAT, FAT32. The fourth option is XFAT. This is the option that you need to select if you intend to use this drive with Mac computers, but also Windows computers. This does not have the four gigabytes limitation that we just talked about, uh, about the MS-DOS format. With XFAT, you'll be able to transfer and put much larger files. And I think most people will choose XFAT, especially if you're using this drive for school or work where you may encounter colleagues using Windows computers and you'll want to connect your drive to their computer this way by choosing XFAT, you're sure that it will be compatible with both PCs and Macs. Finally, there's another option, which is NTFS. Microsoft NTFS. This is an option that is only good if you want to use this hard drive or SSD drive with Windows computer only Windows computer, because if you choose NTFS, your Mac computer won't be able to write on this drive. It will only be able to read it. So do not select NTFS. Your Mac is not compatible with this format. The last thing I want to add about these options is if you want to use this drive to make some backups for your Mac and only backups, that's the only purpose why you got this, and you're gonna use Time Machine. I'll just show you in a few moments how to use it. Well, you should choose APFS or Mac OS Extended, one of these two options. If your Mac is a more, more recent one, choose APFS. If you have an older Mac that is older than 2018 around, well, choose Mac OS Extended. In my case, I'll choose Mac OS Extended. Then you have over here another option right under it. What I suggest you is simply put it to the first one, GUID partition map. Just leave it like this. Once you're ready, press erase. And just to make sure that when you press erase, it will format the drive. So everything that is on it will be erased. So if it's not a brand new drive and you have some important files there, make sure to make a backup before pressing erase. So I'll go ahead, I'll press erase. Usually it only takes a few seconds. Maybe if you have a larger drive, it can take up to a few minutes. You just have to wait until you get a confirmation that your drive has been erased and formatted. Here we go, we have the confirmation here. We have the green check mark operation successful. Perfect. Now we can simply press done. And here we go on the left side, we even have our new name over here, test drive five. If you open finder on your Mac and you're browsing files, the same way you're doing as always on the left side over here, you're going to see the names of your drives and you should find the one you just set up. Once you finish using it, if it's not a drive that will stay connected to your Mac permanently, you need to eject it. You cannot simply unplug the USB plug uh, from your computer because this can corrupt data and cause some problems. So to eject it, there's two ways really you can do it. You see over here on the right side of the name, there is a small icon. You just click on it and usually in two seconds it will be ejected. You can also see all the drives that are connected. In our case, this is the new one we just uh, set up. To eject it, you just have to throw it into the garbage bin. So drive, uh, click on it and drag it right down over here in the bar where you see this uh, trash 
icon where this is what they say above it it will not delete the drive all it does is eject it and it will disappear and now you can safely unplug it from your computer if you did this by mistake and you want to reconnect it well simply plug it back let me do it and under two three seconds you see it appeared again at the same spot now let's see how to do a backup using time machine all right so now let me show you how to use time machine on this drive so the first step is to go on the top left corner where you see the mac logo click on it and then go down until you see system settings tap on this this menu will open up if you have an older mac usually you'll have a bunch of icons in the middle you should find time machine if you have an older mac usually it's um, around here if you have one of the newest one like this one what you need to do is to go into general and then from here you're going to see time machine click on it perfect next step is to click on add backup disk in this list you'll see all the external drives that are connected to your mac in this case there's only one so I'll select it. But if you have multiple ones, make sure you select the right one. Then press on Setup Disk. Here we have a few options. I suggest you keep Encrypt Backup. This way it will be password protected. And if somebody stole your drive with your backup, well, that person won't be able to access its content. So to create a new password, simply type it over here re-enter the same password you just typed you can also give yourself a hint let's say you forgot this password this is the hint you'll see so let's say the birthday of i don't know my dog can you can write anything really and finally you can set a disk usage limit so let's say you don't want to use the the whole memory capacity of this drive for time machine for your backup for any reasons really let's say you have some school projects that you want to keep on this drive separately well you can say custom over here and you can allow time machine to have only a certain amount of memory in my case i'll just leave it to none since this drive will be exclusively for time machine then press done after that this step just takes a few seconds you just need to be patient it's preparing the drive and here we go this is what you should see now the name of your drive right under time machine from here there's also a few other options you can select your drive the way i just did simply by clicking on it and then press options on the top you'll see backup frequency this is very important so do you want the your computer to make a backup every hour uh, every day or only once a week this is up to you there's no specific rule obviously if you want to protect your data and make sure you don't lose anything just keep it at every hour the way it was you can also select manually if you select manually it means that there is no automatic backup that will incur i don't suggest you'll have to click every time make backup start backup uh, to start the process and i guess sometimes you'll forget so i suggest you, you choose one of these three options if you choose automatically one of these three options you'll also see backup on battery power so by default, as you see, it's turned off, which means that if your Mac computer is disconnected from power, it's not plugged in, it won't automatically do the backup because it will try to preserve your battery life. You can also check it, which means that no matter if your Mac is plugged in or unplugged on battery, the backup will happen no matter what. It will use more energy more battery so you just need to be mindful about this and if we go over here the last option it will tell you exclude from backups 
So here we see all the drives that you do not want to back up. Test drive 5 is already on the list. Why? Because test drive 5 is the drive we selected to make the backup. So it cannot do a backup of a backup. It doesn't make any sense. So this is why you see it over here. But if you want to exclude drives, but also folders, not only drives, you can click on this plus symbol. And here you'll be able to select anything. Let's say on desktop, I have this folder over here, this one. And I do not want this to be part of the time machine backup for any reason. Well, I just have to select it and then click exclude. It will be added from the exclusion list. When you're done, press done. And you see the backup started automatically. Depending how many files you have on your computer, this will determine how much time it takes for your uh, Mac to make the backup. So from here, you can let this happen. You can even close this window and just use your computer the same way you're using every day. You see on the top right corner over here, you have the Time Machine logo. You can click on it if at any time you want to know what's happening with your backup. So over here, I can see that it's currently backing up my data. You can stop this backup and you can browse Time Machine backups. I'll show you just in a few seconds how to do it. And you can open Time Machine settings from here. You don't have to go through uh, the same way we did previously. That takes more steps. You can simply click on the top here and you get these shortcuts. Now, what happens if you want to recover a file from your time machine drive? Let's say you have deleted that file without knowing it and now you're panicking, you want to get it back. So you go in time machine on the top here and select browse time machine backups. This will open. This looks uh, like Finder because it's Finder, where all your files are, the same way you're browsing them on your computer. And you have multiple layers of this. So you see over here, there's many different windows. By clicking this top arrow, you can go back in time. Again, this is a fresh um, time machine backup, so I don't have much data here. But if you uh, did this a few uh, a weeks ago or maybe a few months ago, you'll be able to go back in time very, very far and retrieve your file this way. So you just have to go in the folder that where the file is located or was located, let's say download. And from here, you're probably going to see it. All you have to do is to click on it. And then on the bottom here, you see restore, click restore. And it will bring it back on your computer from your time machine backup. If the file was already on your computer, you can decide over here to keep the original only, keep both of them, this is what I suggest, or to replace uh, the new file with the older one you just recovered. This is up to you. I'll click replace. So this is it. This is how you use your drive on your Mac computer. I hope this was useful. If so, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.